Hello. Uh, <laughs> the most instructive games of chess ever played by Irving Chernev. <laughs> Irving Chernev. Irving Chernev. And we are looking at game number four. This is a very instructive game. It's a good game for you to look at. What's the theme? The theme is an aggressive rook in the end game. So in rook end games where both sides have a rook and a bunch of pawns, mm -hmm. it's very important to have your pieces active. Specifically, your rooks need to be active, mm -hmm. attacking enemy pawns, helping push your pawns down the board, cutting off the enemy king, even defending your own pawn sometimes. Um, and it's important to have your king active as well. And the player playing white is Sigbert Teresh, who um, is a, a, a famous player. He has a couple of big openings named after him. And the guy playing black is Edmund Thorold, who was a, a British chess master from the time. Um, and this hey, game, chess master. Exactly. This game was played in 1890. Oh my gosh. It's, very, it's an old game. That's like 100 and... All right, so e4, e6, d4, d5, and knight d2. So this opening is called uh, the Terrish. So this is, it's named after the guy playing white, and he's playing uh, his own his own opening here. Um, so this is a way of meeting the French defense. The more natural move is to play knight c3, which is also a good move. This is, the, this is the move that I play as well. But against knight c3, they have a system called bishop b4, the winnower. The bishop is pinning this knight, and black is often going to trade that knight to, trade that bishop for the knight to wreck our pawns. And knight d2 daddy, daddy. avoids and all of this while still defending her pawn. Bishop b4 is knight c3, knight c3, bishop b4. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's say white does a random move, but I'm going to show you. Well, he's not going to do a random move. Hang on, but I want to show you, I want, I want to get the black moves. I want to get the blacks move. Takes, takes, takes. Oh, that's a good fork. Yeah, so the idea of bishop takes c3 is not wait, wait, that... Wait, wait, Oh, wait, no, I... I it's not that we're going to keep that pawn forever, necessarily. Could he do... Wait, could he do... Yeah. Or quit saying. Hmm. No, 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 no. He, he can take. He can take that now. If, if knight takes, 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 takes. Well, you have it back here. Instead of bishop g five, I would have took this free pawn. Oh. Something like this. So what was uh, one free I lead Joe something something. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, it's one of my friends. Um, I, I know who it is. So, okay. So, the guy plays this move, c5, which is a normal move. Um, it, this is using a pawn that's not one of his center pawns to contest the center. So, it's a good move. He's trying to chip away at white center. So, takes, takes. And he gives the line of c takes, d4, check. Takes. This bishop is pinned. And this is a nice fork. Yes, it is a nice Queen seven, and now we win our piece back, um, and white has... A pawn. Um, well... It's not a pawn, it's a... Yeah, but this pawn, I guess he can't keep it forever, but we'll keep the initiative. Like, this pawn is weak, we can well, castle daddy, quickly. Daddy, daddy, daddy. If... Daddy. What about half? Oh, no, 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 wait, no, 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 if there, oh wait, we can't do takes. That's illegal. Oh, we can't keep this. We can't. Keep, um, yeah, so you can't keep that pawn forever, but you don't really, you don't have to necessarily. Like you can just go knight e two and castle quickly. Like if queen takes c six, maybe I can just castle right away. Maybe and some. Next of, my rook's maybe, coming to e1. maybe some a thousand. Maybe some a thousand. Not not most. Like like for, like two or one would do this. Usually, people at a thousand level are already not hanging their queen that way. Usually not. Check, check, check. Wait, that is. Sometimes they might miss a backwards yeah, this move. Is, like this that. would hold be on, a hold funny check. game. Let's let's stay on let's stay on on track here. So after e takes d five, queen takes d five. Um, knight f three. Um, okay, so this is an idea of a temporary pawn sacrifice. So black can take this pawn right now. We can't take BC4, it back. BC four. BC four. BC four. We can't take it back, but hold on, hold on, hold on. But the idea 
is that this pawn can't be defended forever. And meanwhile, we're going to develop our pieces quickly and chase this queen around. So yeah, bishop c4 is developing a piece while attacking their queen, which is always a good thing to do. Why not? Why not? Well, they can take it for starters. Oh, I thought, wait a minute, c4 is, is on the fourth rank, not the fifth rank. Yeah, but their pawn is on the fifth rank, right? Their pawn has advanced three squares. One, two, three. So their pawn that has advanced three squares, which is on their fifth rank, can take this pawn on Passant for one move. Oh, and they can't take it from Passant. So bishop c4. Um, and besides, even if they couldn't take this pawn, it would still be like, let's say that after c4 they couldn't take on Passant and they had to go like this. It's still better to play bishop c4 because we want to develop our pieces. We don't necessarily want this pawn here. This pawn is actually blocking our bishop now. So it's, it's still better to have our bishop on c4. This is a good active square for the bishop. It's like looking at the center here. So queen h5, castles, and knight c6. Yeah, he points out, oh, we have a nice little trick. If they play e5, I'm going to scroll away. This is white to play and win back the pawn. So black's trying to be greedy and keep his pawn. Okay. okay. Now white has a nice trick to win the pawn back. Hold up, what the... Uh, are we getting, are we getting on, I have a question. Are we nope, getting nope, this nope. pawn or this pawn? I can tell you that. Hi! Oh, wait a minute. Ah, that's easy. D4, D4 pawn. Black can be, I mean, white can be greedy. Ah, oh, my, um. Nope, like, use your words, use your words. Knight takes d4. Okay, queen takes d1. Oh, shoot, uh. Okay, that just hangs in light. Okay, so we gotta find something else. Bishop takes f7, queen takes f7, knight takes e5. Okay, that's two pawns for a piece. Okay, hang on. Don't tell me the answer. Unless it's been one, one million days, then you have to tell me the answer. Um... Let me see. Give me a hint. One hint. Well, you tried knight takes d4, but the problem was that if they throw in a queen trade, uh, the new knight's hanging at the end. Oh. But there's another pawn you can take where that problem doesn't happen. Knight takes e 5 Okay, so knight takes e 5 What happens on queen takes d1 then? Rook takes. Yeah, just rook takes and you've won your pawn. Okay, knight takes e5, queen takes e5. What's the problem? Rookie one! Yeah, rookie one. So this is the idea. Knight takes e5 is a nice, um, a nice discovery. Oh, yeah, and actually on queen takes d1, we can even throw in this check. Uh, we, we can take, we can take more stuff. And then play rook takes d1. Because bishop takes a 7 comes with check. So that's the idea, is that this pawn, it just, it, he can't hold on to it forever. Castles, knight c6, and now we see another way of going after the d4 pawn. The knight comes to b3, and now everything oh, is attacking. This happened in the yeah, game. Yeah, this is the game. So e5, and now Terrish used our same trick from before. Knight takes. Knight takes c5 is a nice discovery. So knight takes c5, hangs his queen. Queen takes c5, runs into your rookie one. Yeah. So he played queen takes d1, rook takes d1. Knight 65. So white is down a piece now. What is? What should he do? Rook e1. Okay, rook e1. And when he defends his knight with a pawn, what should we do? F4. So this is our standard way of winning this kind of pinned piece. He's going to... Um, he's threatening to take twice on e5, and then take the d4 pawn at the end. 
That's his threat. So bishop b4. Now we need to be a little, um, a little careful. Um, yeah, there's a funny uh, thing. Okay, so he plays bishop d2. The other way of defending the rook would be rook e2, which is something that a lot of players might play. But now black bishop can actually g4. he can actually force a draw in this funny way. So bishop g4. How do you do a draw? What the heck? Bishop g4. Where does the rook? Where can the rook go? Rook e4. Okay. Where can the rook go? Rook e3. Free move repetition. Okay. And so he just goes. Back. Wait, what it's if funny. we did that for a hundred times? Wait, can we do it again? Does it work if we do it again? Well, in a chess.com game, it automatically ends the game on three move repetition. I know. Um, but in a, in a tournament game, somebody has to claim that, like, you could play the same moves forever. And somebody has to claim take. the draw. And then no Well, if you don't no take, then you would just play it forever. All right, so bishop d2 is a better move. Takes, takes. Bishop f5. Now he takes back his piece. Yes. Um, by the way, what would happen if he took your pawn? F takes, I mean, e takes f6 check, and now he got one to g pawn. Yeah, this would be a very embarrassing thing. Because after something like this, we're even, Wait, what about we're daddy, even queening. Daddy, daddy. daddy. Yeah. E takes. Yeah, king, <laughs> king f8 is, is better. Um, but now, now if if a random move here, I'm gonna get two. I'm, well, I'm gonna get my queen back. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So instead of so black deals with this discovery by uh, castling queenside, and now bishop d3 um, takes and takes. So we've talked about how we don't just trade randomly yeah. for no reason. So why has white made this um, trade? Well, hold on, hold on, hold because, on. Because hold he's on. opening hold this on. E file. Yes, that's absolutely one reason. So he's opened this E file, that's very nice. And it's not just any random open file, it's the file in front of black's yeah. king. So the C file is useful for white. The other thing was that black only had one good piece in this position. Bishop. His bishop on f5 was his best piece. And now we've removed his best piece. Because this knight is de isn't developed. But given our rook away into the game. Yeah, so two things. F shake c5. Bit, bit 79. Check. So we bring our rook in with check. This is an important move. King b8. Yeah, they point out that if they go king d7, then, I mean, black's king is clearly in big trouble. Yeah, this is kind of a funny. A funny line. And we, we went upon. Wait, and also, their king still remains in trouble. What? Oh, wait, never mind. I, that, I, daddy, I was gonna say. Come on, tell me, tell me, tell me with your words. I tell was me with gonna the say. Words. The only. Okay, the only legal move for the king is. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I mean, the king's not in check, so he doesn't have to. Um, And he, he's not gonna get mated because our rook is going to give him some square, whichever one we take with, but. This is still quite bad for Black. Like we're threatening to skewer his rook, and his pieces are undeveloped. And this is a, this is a mess. So he has to go king d six. Well, he could play knight of six, I guess. What about look, look, look This is probably e most logical. Takes d4, look, he takes oh. Yeah, he's not he's not checkmated yet, but still he's going to be down a pawn, and our position is very nice. For, but his king is not. His king is probably okay because it's not getting checkmated. It's developed in the end game, but maybe next white would simply play something what? like this. King f two, bring his king game. in. This is more like an end game, really, because the queens are off. That's the biggest thing, and a bunch of other pieces have been traded off as well. And now um, nobody's really getting checkmated anymore. Now it's about trying to queen a pawn. So white is doing well with his extra pawn here. Okay, so after king b eight, we take our pawn. Um, knight f six. One. So now we we trade. If he takes with the rook, then we're going to win a pawn like this. And the d4 pawn can't be defended. No knight moves defend the pawn. So next we just take. Or king moves all other pawns. Take a free pawn. Exactly. So instead he takes with the knight. Who do you want to win? <coughs> well, I know who wins. Oh, well, uh, how about the opposite of someone who wins? 
Okay, so now white makes a very important move. Oh, Where do right. rooks love to be the most? Rooks on the seventh right. On the seventh right. Boom. Look, can't rookie like seven. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. So rookie seven is a very important move because the rook is doing two things. Number one. It's going to get those pawns and be... Uh, a pig? <laughs> yeah, a pig. Yeah, but the first thing I was going to say is that white's rook is keeping black's king out of the game. This king wants to go to c7, and they yeah. can't do that anymore. It doesn't even let you win an Isla sport. Exactly. And number two is that we're attacking all of black's pawns. Like, this knight also wants to move up the back rank, but it can't, because it has to defend this pawn now. So white's rook is um, outstanding here on the seventh rank. This is a very important move. Black plays a6, giving his king a square to move to. Okay. Knight b3, improving our knight, attacking this pawn. Um, yeah, we were also threatening, if he does something random, um, we were also threatening to play knight a5, when we have threats of takes, and we're threatening uh, knight c6 check, like if they do this, a knight c6 check. Yeah, so the knight would be very strong here. Um, if knight d6, we would have takes Daddy, up to 7 can I tell you something? Tell me, tell me the moves. Um, wait, it doesn't work. Hang on, hang on a minute. Wait, let's just say black doesn't play. Nope, tell me the moves. Okay, let's just say black doesn't handle the move. Uh, push my pawn. Push, push the, push the eight. Okay, pull that one, pull that one. Um, what about all takes B7? Yeah, that's what that, that's white's idea here. We take on B7, and now the rook is even better, because it's controlling the whole 7th rank. Wait, hang on, about king somewhere, and then I'll tell you another move. Knight C6. That, um, is almost getting into trouble, I guess, that if, because your rook is hanging. No, oh, but then I take that one. Yeah, but you don't want to give up your awesome rook for my crappy rook, so you can do much better than this. Oh. Your rook is, like, dominating. Black's rook is, like... Sad and doing nothing, so we don't want to trade. And the watching rooks. TV. Exactly. But watching. So the move I would make instead of knight c six is that rook h seven. Daddy, but it's watching boring TV. Exactly. So this is getting your rook safe, um, but it's also attacking a new pawn. We might play knight c six in the future. You want to keep your dominating rook in this position. All right, let's go back to the game. So b six was played to stop knight a five. Um, and now we have a little trick. Knight takes d4. And, and we're fighting knight c6. Yes, knight c6 uh, is a threat, so he needs to take... Take the e8 thing. King c7. Check. Okay, check, so... Check, 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 No, actually, you need to, you need to uh, be careful in this position. Checking is not so good. Um, so this is a new phase of the game. Now white is up a clear pawn. It's this pawn. Um, so now white needs to consolidate and start converting his extra pawn. And he's going to do a few things. He's going to activate his king. That's very important. He's going to get his king in the center. He's going to um, make sure that all of his pawns are not hanging. And he's going to start uh, attacking black pawns and making weaknesses. So the first move that white makes is rookie three, which is a very good move that allows his king time to get into the game to defend his stuff. If, whoops, if rook e7 check, black runs his king into the center after takes. Now we start taking a lot, trading a ton of pawns. Now black has a little trick here. This is an important trick. He could go rook d2 right away. Instead he can win a pawn with check by going check, king f2, check, king f3, takes. And this position... Uh, white is still up a pawn, but now black has a lot of counterplay because these pawns are ready to run down the board. Um, so this is not so simply winning at all for white. White is probably not objectively winning in this position. And black can fight a lot. So rookie three is much better, keeping everything under control. King d7, now we get our king in first. g6, and now he makes another nice rook move. The point is that black, white wants to bring his king to e3, but the rook is in the way. So we play rook h3, attacking a pawn, and giving our king access to the e3 square. It's also uh, forcing a little bit of a weakness with h5, because now these pawns, since they're advanced, they're a little easier for us to attack. So this has been a really nice maneuver. King e3. Um, so this is a very strong move. The king is defending this pawn. The king is getting closer to the center, 
it's pushing Black's Rook back, and also we're supporting d4, so we can move our extra passed pawn. <laughs> There's nothing left in there. <laughs> okay, Rook to d6. We advance our passed pawn. Notice he didn't randomly just fling the passed pawn until his king was here to help keep the pawn safe. Check. No problem. King d3. Okay, rookie one is... Um, well, threatening checkmate? <laughs> no, he's not threatening uh, anything with our king. The rook wants to come to one of these squares. B1, A1, or G1 to attack our pawns. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So we play rook G3. This is a a nice move. Rook B1, what would you play here? This didn't happen in the game, but what would you play here? Okay. White has a nice um, mini tactic to stay in total control here and win another pawn. King C2. King C2 is very nice. So you're defending something with tempo, and then after my rook runs away, you take a pawn. It's a nice move. So rook E6. Now we're going to see a very important idea. White is up a pawn, right? So if he goes into a king and pawn versus king ant game, he's easily winning. Like he'll win in his sleep, especially since his extra pawn is a passed pawn that's defended by his king. Sleepless so, nightmare. So white can always use the idea of threatening to trade into a pawn end game to push black around. Because black can never trade the rooks no matter what. If he trades the rooks, it's like resigning here. Oh like, my gosh. Trading the rooks is basically equal to resigning. That's how easy it is to win the king and pawn ending. R winning the rook ending is much harder, but winning the king and pawn ending is like, you can just do it in your sleep. Oh my, you can do so, it in your sleep? In your sleep. So rookie three, Okay. let's just look very quickly at what happens if he trades the rooks. This is just, oh, becomes very easy okay. to win. All we do is we block um, the pawns on both sides of the board. So something like this, we start bringing our king in. We play a move like g3. Eventually these pawns get blocked and black and can't move. What about hold on, H4? hold on. H4. Okay, h4, I'm just gonna take and then block the pawns. Okay. And now you have to make moves like this. And then eventually I get my king in and start taking all of your other pawns. And then I win, I win easily. Technically- and yes, Technically, I could also do something fancy, like playing something like this in this position. Uh, 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 uh. They can even checkmate, checkmate. So we could also do something daddy, like that. What about daddy? What about the rook? What about rook? You could promote to a rook. Yes, you could. You could also promote to a bishop. What? Because <laughs> you have mates. Oh, you do have me. But this is the point, <clears throat> is that once the rooks come off, we just win instantly with but no then, efforts. You could, you could. Put, Which is why in these okay. positions, in these positions, you need to remember to never, ever, ever trade the rooks. When you're down a pawn and defending, then you never trade the last the pieces off, because usually you're just winning I, I have something you very, too. losing okay. very easily. Can I say, can I say Hold on, we're going we're gonna to go back to the game. All right, so he, black plays rook d6. He keeps the rooks on. Now we play rook e5. So this rook is very nicely placed here because it's controlling the middle of the board. And we're also giving our king a path into the game with king e4. Rook f6. So again, black is trying to attack our pawns with rook f2. So now he plays another patient move. He plays a4, which is gaining space on the queen side and stopping black from moving his pawns there. Alright, rook f2. How should black defend his pawns now? Or how should white defend his pawns? He's forking our pawns. Rook what do we do? Rook g5. Well, rook g5, he can take a rook pawn. Rook e2? Yeah, rook e2 is much stronger. Remember that, can he trade rooks? No. No, so it's not like, an option. That's for like resigning. Exactly. So it's this move. Possible. But this move just kicks his rook out of the second rank completely. Rook g5 is giving him a lot more chances because now maybe he can go like this and attack another king pawn. King c3, king c3. No, I'm taking your, Take your pawn the here. Pawn. This um, is in hand. But now rook a2. Um, See, if you're not careful, my rook just king, like... King, king b3. King b3. Now I, now I make a draw, at least. Look, take 
All your pawns are gone. Well, I have that one pawn. Yeah, but with my king in front of it, um, well, my, you can't win. My, my book is on the six legs, so d5. Push. Push. Okay. Well, let me push my pawn. Okay. Mm, king c4. Alright, I'm going to keep pushing my pawn. King c5. Okay. Um, oh, uh, king b6. Send a king b6? No, 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 no. Uh, king d4. Okay, king d4. Um, <laughs> ah, I made the national master thing. Um, we'll get something, Chuck. Okay, six. Okay, seven. Okay, seven. This is just gonna probably be a win for me. This is just a win. Come back here. A d6? D7? Oh shoot, you're something tricky. King e5. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, I actually could have queened as well because if I queen and you take, I don't take your rook, I take the pawn. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this is, position is actually a draw. The thing is, this position is actually a draw even if I didn't have this pawn. What? If I don't have this pawn, it's still a draw. Like, I'm going to give you my pawn and show you. So, uh, rook takes a6, rook takes h2. Uh, let me just give away this pawn. Give away the. Wait a minute, that's a free look! Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. I'm just, I'm just going to this position. So, this position, I make a draw like this. This but is how I make a draw. Take and no matter what you do, I just shuffle around my king on the uh, the sixth rank. Um, until eventually, so if you check, no problem, I just come back. I'm just going to keep your king out of the game. Hey, you can't make moves for me. And then once you play d6, I come here. You're threatening mate now, right? And now I check you. So this is a very famous um, drawn king no. and uh, rook and pawn versus rook ending. Stop making it. Oh, yeah, this is... Called the Philidor oh, yeah, position. Go back a second. What do you want to play here? No, take your pawn. Oh. That's that's kind of, that's one of the, the main points. Yeah, see, it's not mate. Put back to attack. We'll leave away to draw. Yeah, so this is called the Philidor position, and it's um, one of the most basic ways that rook and pawn versus rook ends up in a draw. It's a really fundamental rook end game. Okay, so rook e2. We kick the rook out. Goodbye. Goodbye, rook. Now, see, notice how he starts squeezing like a boa constrictor. He's not being too impatient. Like, he's not being a, a move that scholastic players, like a 1,000 might play in this position, is a move like d5. Yeah. Just kind of rushing ahead. Like, you have a pawn, so you push it. Instead, he's, like, squeezing every uh, little ounce of space out of the position before rushing ahead. So b4 is a nice move. Rook f4. Uh, rook f1. Rook e5. Rook f2. Now our b-pawn is not hanging anymore. Now how can we defend our g-pawn while making some progress? Your, your pawn's hanging. What do we do about it? Well, d2 like we did before. So that will maybe repeat the position after rook e2, rook f6, rook e5. But we have a better move here. 
So instead we play rook g5. So this move, no, now that our b pawn is not hanging, is very good. Because now this is combining an attack with defense. Um, and a lot of times some of the best uh, moves or like the mark of a strong player is that they find a way to defend their position and do something aggressive all at once. So rook g5 is very nice. The rook has to go back to f6 because otherwise I was going to take another free pawn. And h3 is a nice little waiting move. King d4. I mean, it also has the idea of playing g4 eventually. King e4, check. Okay, can you trade rooks? No! So we're kicking the rook away. And now that we've... Now that White has made all of his pieces as good as they can possibly be, he's improved everything as much as he possibly he can, he finally pushes his pawn. But he only did this after playing h3, getting his king all the way into the center, getting his rook on the best possible square here on e5, and pushing both, both of his queen side pawns. Now he plays d5. And Black always has to worry about, by the way, the idea of rook e6 check trading off the rooks. Even if it gives an extra pawn, he has to worry about whether I can do that. Black plays king d7. Um, yeah, notice that black does not have many moves. If rook f7, check is winning a pawn. If he plays a5, now we have this idea of rook e6 going into a winning pawn end game. So we win like this. Check, takes, 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 king d4. Okay. So Daddy we're going died. after this pawn. Daddy died. Just king d6, king c4, king c6, h4. King d6. And now we're going to win the... Uh, uh, we're gonna win a pawn. Just a wall bit, just a wall bit. Black is one out of moves. Yeah, because basically he has to go here and then I take your pawn. Because it says it right there. Yes. In capital letters. Yeah, there are probably many ways to win here. Like I could have played on um, h4 right away and this will be winning because you have to let me in this way, or let me in this way. King c6, king e5, king c5, king f6, king b4, takes, 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 king b... King g6... It's a little tricky, actually. Doesn't work so well. King c6 doesn't work so well. Yeah, it is more accurate to go this way. Okay, anyway, um, so... He plays king g7, and now rook g5, the point is that he's threatening to play king e5. Um, he also has the idea of playing rook g5 and pushing black's rook away with rook f3. King d6, rook g3, king e7, and now here's his idea, rook f3. What should black do? Can he trade the rooks? Yes! <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. So what does he have to do? Rook d6. Yeah, look how powerful this is. He only has one move, basically. He's forced to play this one move because trading the rooks is so bad for him. And now, what should white play to make pro progress? King e5. Yeah, king e5. Very nice. Bring your king up. Rook d8. Now, what do you think white should play? Up. White has a little combination to win the game now, but... Rook f6. This is the last Look. thing that you have to find. Rook f6 is actually... Better than the combination? Um, it should be completely winning, I think. You just have to be careful. What did you plan to play after rook f6, rook takes d5 check? Rook f6. Um, king takes d5, king takes f6, king c6, and now I'm just winning all your bonds. Yeah, so white will be first. So you do have to calculate this, but this should be totally winning. After takes takes, king c6, and black is way too slow because I, um... Take your stuff first. So like here it takes, and black's just much, much Where's too the slow. Not even close. Not even, not even, not even on the, not even on the third rank. So rook f6 is actually, um, is actually very nice, and it is going to win. Uh, it's going to win another pawn, and white will still be totally winning here as well. Um, Terrace chose another little trick. He played the move d6 check. And this has the idea of if oh, rook takes d6, 
work at seven. Did this happen in the game? No, but this was his, his idea, his main idea oh. with D6 check. It, it looked like it. And now this is your same thing. I'm just going to bulldoze all these points. Right. 49. Um, so instead, he played King D7, keeping the kings on. Check. By the way, if he goes here, what should you play? <laughs> Look, C7 mate. This is mates. So instead he had to come to C8, but now we play <laughs> check. And now um, this rook is keeping Black's King out of the game, and we're going to um, get the rooks off by advancing our D pawn. So check, D5, D7. And yeah, there's. I think that almost everything is winning now. He plays king e7, and then rook e2 is coming in with rook e8. And so black resigned here because he can't stop rook e8 winning his rook. Um, so this was a very nice game by Terish. What do we learn from this game? What are some things that we learned from this game? Put your, have your king look active when you have a passed pawn. Yes. Yeah, so what does it mean to have your to have your rook active in the end game. What are some what are some active things for rooks to do? Uh, get off get off the first file. Okay. Where do rooks love to be? Seven. They love to be in the seventh like, rank, especially if they're attacking all these pawns and looks, trapping a king. Black, black looks like to be at the seventh rank. What else did he do? What else did he get active in this in, in this end game? His king yeah, his king was like always in the center of the board and it was always helping that D pawn um, to stay defended and to advance down the board. Um, he also found ways to increase his space by slowly pushing his pawns. And what was, when he was up a pawn, what was the leverage, the little threat that he used all the time to make progress? Um, he threatened to do what? He threatened to do something? No, he threatened to do something that Black could not allow. Trade off. Yeah, so when you're up a pawn, a happy threatening to trade into king and... King and pawn endgames is a very uh, useful technique to sort of push your opponent around because and they can't accept the trade. To end the video, can I do one game? Pretty, 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 pretty. No, we're going to end the... Well, I don't see why you can't do one game, actually. No, me, 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 yeah, me. All right, let's play one Blitz game and then we'll say goodbye. Uh, can we do free two? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I changed my guide to um, love right, you. Let me make sure that this yeah, was good. is still working. Um, it looks a little messed up. It's a little messed up. Just a little. That's probably because it's live chess, right? Right, because it's live chess. Oh, but I think if I go into an actual game, it'll be okay. Hey, can I just? Uh, I'm just gonna click on Brandon Jacobson and see if it gets fixed. And that's because you're in it. it. If it's not going, it doesn't. It. Well, it's okay. It's okay. I think it's okay as well. All right, we're just gonna fix this. Very quickly. Oh, no. good, 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 good. All right, this is going to have to be good enough for us. Um, and are you ready? Yeah. All right. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Can I do my damn game? Oops. No, no, no. We're going to do a plus game, and then we're going to say goodbye. Let's switch seats. All right, all right. You're not, you're not. Okay, I'll, I'll tell when, when, um, you can watch my game downstairs, and when I'm done, then come up here. No, I'm going to sit here. Ah, oh, well, we're fine. All right, let's see. Three, two. Uh, no, five minutes. That's fine. Ah, uh, uh, I D five. See, okay. Uh, Queen's Gambit declined. Oh, click this tab. Click this sh shut. Oh, Brandon Jacob. Click X on him. He's a good guy. He's a good player. He's a GM. Oh, I just get this pawn for free. Come on. I'm gonna go ahead. So now he has to move his king. He has to move his king. But soon I'm gonna go here. So he has to move his king. This person was born in 1991, you think? Then that, that seems likely. That means they're probably 29. 
that probably. Oh wait a minute, that's just easy. Attack this look. Okay. Gun move. I'll just go back. Clone castle. I'm gonna finish my development. Alright, my development is finished. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah, it probably is. It probably is. Okay. Hey, we both had, we both had the same time for a second. Three fifty-nine. Yeah. Um. Stay at the same time again. <laughs> okay, doesn't take good move, good move. Um. One day, maybe win that pawn. Daddy, today, can we do a bullet video? Ultra 1300. Put your gun. Take. Take and now, now, now I'm gonna be up two pawns. Well, two free moves at a time is too scary for me. So I just do one free move normally. <laughs> Unless it's bullet, then I'm not scared. Then I'm not scared at all. Oh, could I trade the box off? Could I? It's a possibility. Should I? Hmm. Okay, maybe. All right, I have I I do have this past pawn, so I will. Seems like that I I saw you I saw you I saw your head shake. Yes, <laughs> so it was yes. Oh, you don't want to trade them off, eh? Come on, move your luck, move your luck off. Hang your look. I, I promise I'll take the look, not checkmate. Cause a, cause a look? Okay, a look is not better than checkmate. I was just hoping him for, okay, now he has to trade the looks. Now he has to. And game's getting spicy. Ah, <laughs> uh, if I go, oh wait a minute, um, here. He has to go here. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I, I, I do have this pass pawn too. My king's active. My king's active like in that other game. Uh, check. Robert Hess. Uh, okay. I'm gonna move my bishop back so I can get this. I want to get the f pawn off the board. And can we and can we put the king like over here? Yeah, that would be better. All right, all right, all right. You wanna you wanna get that pawn? Nah. Nah. Well, oh, I'm gonna go here, here takes, and then just queen, queen, queen. Daddy, did you know one time in a tournament game someone promoted to a rook instead of a queen? But it was 
um, it was actually impossible for them to win because I ate it at night, but it, it was like so hard for them to win. So it, it ended up being a draw. I think it was a draw. Maybe, a, maybe it was a win. Yeah, and I have a pass pawn. So it was. Oh yeah, and either way, the bishop c could not get it. Oh, I see what you're doing. Very tricky. I'll just go here. Right? Hang on. Well, wait a minute. That's not even cl close to winning. Check. Ha ha ha. Now I'm going to go here. And he's not going to queen. Even if he did queen, I don't think he would win still. Opposition. Well, the, opposi the opposition doesn't really matter if you have a queen. Maybe I'll get two queens, you think? You think I should get two queens? Okay, I'll, I'll get two queens. Oh, uh, but I gotta be careful. Okay, okay. Here. And now I'm gonna eat that pawn. Yeah, now, now I have to take the queen. Is this a... Oh no, it's a win. This is a win. He should just resign in this position. When he, when he gets to the A flank, I'm just gonna put my queen on the seventh flank. Or if he's on the, or if he's on, uh, I'll put my queen on the second flank, if he's on the first flank. Okay. Knights move away. That's, that's mine. That's. That's what my dad taught me. Right, Daddy? He's not resigning. Wow, he should resign. He thinks I'm going to mouse slip. But of course I'm not going to mouse slip. Mouse slip is for babies. Good job. <coughs> That's a pretty nice game. Um, Did I promise to take it there? That was a pretty nice game. What so you won a pawn in the end. That was kind of, honestly, that was kind of like the uh, the game that we looked at. Um, yeah, I, I had the pawn. Because you had an extra pawn and you were winning at an end game. So c4, all right, so he hangs this pawn. Um, by the way, after c4, knight c6 is not so common. It is an opening, but usually we use our, we like to be able to move our c pawn and d pawn endings to con control the center. Uh, attack the center or defend the center. So knight c6 blocking this pawn is not so normal. It is a move. It's called Chagorin's defense. C takes, yeah, queen takes, uh, hang this pawn. Rook b1. Yeah, bishop f5 didn't win as easy as he thought it did, although it is still not bad. e4. Yeah, c6. Good move. Um, it shows why that check was bad. Castling is good. You have discoveries now. And so here, yeah, you didn't have any great discovered um, discoveries with the knight. So you played e5. That was good. You just kept improving your position. You developed. So this was, like, really good how you played this part of the game. And look how happy the computer is with you. Yeah, the computer is so It says you're up, even though you're only up a pawn on the board, it says you're up almost as much as a piece. Because your position is good in addition to being up a pawn. Um... Yeah, here you weren't so sure what to do, but you moved your knight back and threatened to trade, which is good because you were up a pawn. Whoops. <laughs> um, that always happens on your phone, right? Yeah, it happens to me a lot. Daniel you know I did ski? All right, so Rook takes d1. You were trading while up material, no problem. Yeah, you took this pawn. I didn't think you, I think you didn't see that your f pawn was hanging at the end of this, but still you're I, up a totally clear pawn I here. I did see it was, but I was up Rook d8 point. is threatening to make a trade while up material, so he can't make that trade. Bishop c2 is very nice using back rank. He can't take your pawn. Trading the rooks is excellent. 
Activating your king is excellent. And Activating your king is excellent. Here, I wouldn't push e4 right away. I would do a move like king d4, and now you're threatening to play uh, this in addition to c5, b5, and c4. And this will, will be totally winning. That's what I would play here. e4 is slightly too soon. It's certainly not spoiling anything, though. Um, this check is also fine. Now what I would have played to really make white cry is I would have played g5. This move is totally crushing because it stops his king from coming into the f4 square. Yeah. And now you just make a pass pawn on the queen side and win. Easy peasy. So g5 here and later was a nice little trick. Did Still, I, you stayed winning. I have a question. Hold on, let's get through the game. So c5 was very good making a pass pawn over here. Can I, can I do a blitz video today? Pretty, Hold on, pretty, let's get pretty. to the end of this. There was one thing one where things got a little tricky at the end. He played f3. Oh, yeah. So here... Um, here you could have just played takes, because if he takes, oh, this pawn is queening. Um, you would just have an extra pawn and a king upon ending. So you play, I mean, you can play basically Six, anything. 62 all? Yeah, because it's like close to mate. You're about to make a queen. Basically every move wins here. One idea is to play d4 to distract his king, and then you take all of his stuff over here. Another idea would be to play a move like king d4, and next your king is coming into c3 and helping I've this never, queen. I've never seen the computer so happy. Not even in GM games. In GM games, I've I've only seen them in like... 50. So c3 was getting a little tricky because he could have played king e3 here, although I thought that maybe... Yeah, so this kind of keeps things slightly tricky, although I guess you have king c4 and should still be completely winning. Um... But yeah, you can't play this anymore because no. um, he can take with the bishop and no. the bishop's defending this one, the king is defending this one. Um, but bishop takes e4. This is the same thing as in that game. He can't trade the last pieces off and go into the king of pawn ending because he's down pawns. And in particular, this pawn is his queening. And then, yeah. Um, okay, so here, if I was going to try to win this quickly, I would probably do something like this, bring my king in. Because now I can attack his pawn. And, and get and his mate in three. Yeah. And also the nice thing is that I don't even have to worry about stalemate here because he has another pawn. So I can just take and checkmate him. So this is how I would have finished the game. What you played was perfectly reasonable. You went after the final pawn. And then one king and queen versus yeah. king. And your technique here was very nice. This was overall a very good game. And honestly, it was really good for the video because it was very similar to the game that we looked at. You won an endgame with an extra pawn. But Daddy. And you use the idea of threatening trades. Let's do a you. blitz game, roll to 1100. Now we're going to end on this note because that was a great game to end on. Um, and it tied well, in with the video very well. I mean, we're going to say goodbye to uh, everybody watching. Thank Wait, you for watching. What pause, did you say then? Hang on. For a second, subscribe and like, but for a second, can we do another Blitz video? Because Mommy said I don't have to do homework today. Please, pretty pretty. Well, first of all, let's end this one. Because this was a good uh, video and a good okay, game at the good. end. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, my, uh, the webcam's bad. Okay.